situation within the test region. Uh, this, this picture is the live feed and carriage house of one of the data diagnostic tools I used in, for my experiments. <clears throat> Some background and context. Uh, electron acceleration has previously been detected over Arecibo. However, such um, observations were made using a radar diagnostic tool that was only capable of detecting electron acceleration in one direction uh, at any one time. So for our experiments, we intend to utilize the upgraded Arecibo radar to detect electron acceleration in both directions and to observe whether some of these theory that were developed in the past still holds. Specifically, I was testing for uh, occurrence of um, frequency occurrence of uh, upgoing and downcoming electron acceleration. So some definition. Uh, the F region is a layer of the ionosphere uh, at altitudes of between 200 to 500 kilometers. Um, the NAU is a powerful radio transmitter located at the town of Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, about 20 miles from Arecibo. And the Anason and is a common radar diagnostic tool employed in ionospheric plasma research. Uh, it is a frequency sweeping uh, HF radar that maps the ionospheric profile uh, real time. And the ionograms are basically plots produced by such ion the ionoson. And so what exactly are plasma lines? You can think of plasma lines as um, the radar detection of electron acceleration. Uh, more complex answer to this is uh, when we use a narrow beam to probe the to probe the plasma. So what we do is to calibrate the radar at 430 megahertz, and then we detect the frequency bandwidth around it of about one to five megahertz to detect electron acceleration at certain velocity. So the experiment that was conducted uh, was during the summer of 2008, between 3rd August to 6 August 2008. Uh, the experiment time that we used was around 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. And to show the geometry, um, you can see that the NEU transmitter is located at the geomagnetic west of the Arecibo ISR. And the B field is the Earth's geomagnetic field coming down uh, from the sky. So the type of plasma line measurements that we took, uh, we basically took uh, plasma line measurements of 10 minutes, each, uh, twice each hour, and with with um, downtimes of 20 minutes to take other measurements as well. So during our data analysis, we found that enhanced plasma lines was not observed for most of our uh, experimental days. This is very threatening for me because uh, my research was based on this plasma line research. And um, up until spring break, I didn't see any data. But finally, after processing the data for 4th of August 2008, uh, I managed to observe the plasma line you can see over here. Uh, it's not very visible. So obviously, it, from the previous plot, it's difficult to notice that the presence of a plasma line feature is there. So in order to conduct a more detailed analysis of this data, we normalized the uh, data in three dimensions. I'm uh, sorry, we normalized the data and plotted the data in three dimensions. Uh, this is a plot of frequency versus altitude versus normalized radar power. And these plots were obtained from the 4th of August um, data. So the leftmost plot that you see here uh, is the 3D plot of the downshifted data observed at 9, about 9 p.m. local time on 4th of August 2008. I'd like to point out that uh, you see here there's no enhancements here. But uh, the two subsequent plots, they were obtained using uh, data from around 11.30 to mid and midnight. Uh, we see enhancement features recorded at about 4.5 megahertz. This immediately caught my attention because of two reasons. In the past, when we recorded data, uh, these enhancement features usually have a very broad spectrum of uh, frequencies. But this is very narrow band, and also uh, this intense signal only occurred in the downshifted channel, which corresponds to ex uh, electron acceleration in the upward direction. So at this point, I will briefly talk about this possible source mechanism that was proposed in 2007, a 2007 paper. So spread up irregularities occur over Arecibo, and this is the NAU uh, transmitter, the radio transmitter that was very investigating. 
and this is the geometric field light. So first spread the irregularities occur, and then uh, when any transmits a signal, a VLA signal of linearly, linearly polarized wave into the atmosphere, it couples in, and subsequently, because the um, the atmosphere can only support support um, right hand circularly polarized wave, we have uh, the Whistler wave going through, which is the same thing, and then uh, it causes the parametric excitation of uh, low hybrid waves. So this is the, the source mechanism I was talking about. Uh, in this parametric excitation, um, this is this is the visual diagram of the source mechanism itself, and we see that um, two possible schematics. You can excite lower hybrid wave. This is the lower hybrid wave uh, using the same configuration of the, uh, the geometry. So what this means for us is because lower hybrid wave is an electrostatic wave, uh, the k vector, the wave vector itself, is in the same direction as the electric field. So this means that electric field can point in the upward direction and in the downward direction. So meaning that there's a possibility you can excite both. Um, outgoing and downcoming electrons using the Lorentz force law. And this is what was detected in the December 2004 experiment. You can see that uh, over here, uh, we have excitation of uh, electrons over a broadband spectrum. What this broadband spectrum means is that you can, there's a number of velocities that the electrons are excited. So, um, I'd like to point out that this thing that we observe here is uh, a radio signal that was recorded by <coughs> the National Institute of Standard and Technology they were conducting an experiment at that time. So it's not relevant to the discussion. Um, I'd like, so now I'd like to point out the significance of this plot. From the previous plot, we see that uh, the data are recorded at a very narrow band frequency. But for this plot, we see the broadband frequency over here. In addition, these accelerations were, were recorded in both the upshifted and downshifted channel of the plasma line measurements, meaning to say that um, electron acceleration was detected both in the upgoing direction and in the downgoing direction for the December 2004 experiment. But in, our, in my experiment, I did not see that. I only saw uh, electrons move, moving upwards with a very narrow frequency band. So as a result, this was very exciting, and I conducted a more detailed analysis this is the plot of data when I integrated over time to reduce noise. You see three, uh, three spikes of enhanced plasma lines occurring at 3.5, 4, and 4.5 megahertz. So this is what you see here is basically a, a movie of the time, the time movie of uh, the three D plots that I showed you earlier. Uh, just now, what you saw was this feature here, and this feature, as you can see, when you as time progresses, it moves down in altitude. This, this is the altitude axis, this is the frequency axis. You notice that on frequency, it stays relatively constant, but altitude-wise, it keeps dropping. And this is a plot of the corresponding ionogram plot. So, as I said earlier, ionogram plots max, max the ionospheric profile. And you can see that the, ion, the F region plasma actually dropping as time progresses. So what we can gather from this is that um, this plasma that we detected dropping with altitude corresponds to the dropping in, and dropping in altitude of the enhancement feature that was recorded. In addition to the dropping of altitude, we also recorded, um, we also observed that uh, this enhancement feature was very much dependent on spread air. Spread out is this irregularity of cement I was talking about. So what happens is that when you have a large spread out, spread out irregularity, you tend to have uh, enhanced plasma feature, and when there is not, you don't see enhanced plasma feature. So the summary of my findings is, uh, this is a newly observed plasma line feature that has a narrow frequency bandwidth of approximately 12 kilohertz, uh, compared to the 1.75 uh, megahertz were reported in our 2004 experiment. The enhancement only occurred in the downshifted channel. Uh, this is a major finding 